Good Saturday evening, everybody. David Paul with you in the KHOU 11 Weather Center. Welcome to everybody joining us live on Plus and across our digital platforms for our eight o'clock tropical update, everything tropics. And today has been a fascinating day. We've watched Aaron uh, go from tropical storm strength yesterday morning to category five strength late this afternoon. Now the hurricane has now weakened to a strong cat four, but as we look at our names list, you know, we've had weak tropical storm Andrea, weak Barry, weak Chantel, weak Dexter, and then the first hurricane out of the gate that we get in the 2025 season cranks to a cat five. The important news with this is that it's missing everything except the open ocean, which is amazing. So we're getting very lucky with the track and the outcome on Aaron looks good uh, compared to the alternative, which would be a, a Cat 5 interacting with the Caribbean and the, perhaps the East Coast. That's not going to happen. Uh, just amazing how the season's going. So still forecasting from Colorado State, 16 total storms for the year. 14 is normal. And again, NOAA's forecast is in the ballpark as well between 13 and 18 storms, 14 being a normal number of storms five to nine hurricanes, two to five major hurricanes. We've had one of those majors now. Ocean temps remain a little bit above normal across the basin, so there's plenty of warm water in place. That's sort of like a, a checkbox, warm water, check. Doesn't mean you're gonna have a bunch of storms, but you have to have it to get storms. Dust forecast is interesting now, and then through to next Saturday, August 23rd, we get another plume, but then it does thin out. So this is the time of year when the storms that are kicking off the dust off Africa can weaken and not send as much dust out. So less dust may also lead to a more active time of the season. And we are in the active season. A anytime after August 15th uh, through to the middle of October, that's the heart of hurricane season. Technically it peaks on September the 10th. But this is, this is the lead. What, a, what an incredible storm we have here. Just a buzzsaw of a hurricane. That is Aaron. And first off, just looking at the Atlantic Basin, Gulf is quiet. We've got moisture in place from our disturbance, but that did not develop. So the Gulf of Mexico now quiet. Thunderstorms off the Yucatan, not showing any signs of development there. Gulf of Mexico, excuse me, Caribbean is quite as quiet as a mouse. And really the open Atlantic is quiet too. There will be, and we're gonna look at this, there is an area right in here that the Hurricane Center's marked off uh, with a 20% chance for development over the next five days. Some models develop something here, others don't. We will take a look at that here in just a moment. But that is our special feature, which is Hurricane Aaron. As of right now, it's a Cat 4. Winds have come down from 160 to 150. Uh, as the eye of the storm has become occluded, it looks like it's going through an eye wall replacement cycle. Uh, storms intensify, the eye pulls in on itself, and then it, it just can't maintain that intensity forever. And so it will, these storms will go through eye wall replacement cycles. Sometimes they're able to intensify after that. This one is forecast to stay where it is for the next 24 hours and then slowly weaken as it moves north, but it will stay a very powerful hurricane. Uh, pressure's at 934 millibars. That's come up, I saw it as low as 918. Uh, we didn't get below 900 millibars, but 918 is the lowest that I saw it today as we drop down to Cat 5. Moving west at 15 right now, that's the 7 p.m. advisory. But there's San Juan, Puerto Rico. So we actually have some team members from KHOU in Puerto Rico this evening. They've been reporting back that today was the first day they had rain. It's been breezy, but nothing too big and bad right now. Uh, from, from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And they do always have a, a threat for flooding here, being out in the open Caribbean, tropical atmosphere. They've got some mountainous regions there, but this is going to now begin its bend to the north, and that will spare San Juan anything hurricane-like. They'll just have some breezy conditions. And the islands in here, they're breezy, they're rainy, but they're missing uh, what is an incredibly powerful hurricane. Of course, the surf is up as well. And I thought this was interesting. This is a loop over the past six hours. Look at how the eye of this hurricane got smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it just blinked, just closed up. So that when it closes up like that, when it occludes, that usually means we're going through this eye wall replacement cycle, which usually has it weaken for a little bit, and then under the right circumstances, it can then come back even stronger than before. But I thought it's fascinating. It's a perfect example. So the storm went Cat 4, then Cat 5 as the eye was shrinking. This is just like 
uh, an ice skater who begins to spin with, they begin to spin with their arms extended, and then as they pull their arms in, they spin faster and faster and faster. Same thing you're, happen you're seeing here. That is the conservation of angular momentum in, in play. Forecast track from the Hurricane Center. So officially we're at a four. The seven o'clock advisory does not come with an updated forecast track. That will happen at 10. And at that point, they'll figure out if they think it's gonna redevelop after an Iowa replacement cycle. Will it go back to Cat 5 or maybe remain at a Cat 4? The point is moot because it's going to miss everything. Thank goodness. So it bends to the north and west. It misses the east coast by several hundred miles. It may miss Bermuda by a couple of hundred miles as well. And so that is a wonderful outcome for what is a very powerful, very, very dangerous hurricane and a very rare event. It's very rare uh, to get a Cat 5 hurricane uh, really anywhere on the planet. So you're seeing a tremendous release of heat energy uh, and the whole process of this hurricane is that, uh, and hurricanes in general, is that they're, they're a heat transfer, transferring heat energy from the lower latitudes and the warm water and transferring it up to the cooler waters of the northern latitudes. Forecast models, the GFS and the Euro, we've been looking at this for the past couple of days. They're running both simultaneously here. They both start right where the storm is and then have a very similar outcome. Both the Euro and GFS missing the east coast of the US. GFS is a little bit out ahead of the Euro, but both miss the outer banks by quite a bit and then they continue on to the north and east. Now, I mentioned earlier this spot out in here where there is a, right now, a 20% chance that something develops. And we looked at this last night as well. Modeling on this is interesting. The American model in yellow, the GFS, is very consistent past couple of days in developing another storm, a tropical storm or hurricane. Develops in here and then eventually moves into the Caribbean. That would be by next Saturday, August the 23rd. So we have a week from now before we could see a system here in the Eastern Caribbean. Notice how the European model does not have a storm and it's been very consistent. European does not develop that wave. The American model in yellow does develop that wave. So, you know, will it develop? Hurricane Center has placed the odds at 20% and we'll continue to watch that very carefully as we hit through the next several days. One thing you do notice is that at least for the moment, nothing forecast to develop here in the Gulf or in the Central Western Caribbean. That is good for us. Things can change overnight. So we look at the long range models, we say that's nice, and then we get up every single day and just take it one day at a time with the tropics. And I would urge you to, during hurricane season, just watch, watch this update every night at eight, we do it live and you can get a complete update on what's going on out there and so no one gets caught off guard. I thought this was interesting. Uh, wave height forecast. So this is going to curve by the Outer Banks of North Carolina. They're gonna get some wave action here. And just notice how you start getting into the oranges and the reds, 35 to 40 foot swells forecast. That's what they've got here near the center of Cat 4, Aaron now. And notice how the forecast is for larger and larger waves as this spends more time over the ocean as a Cat 4. The waves will get bigger near the center. And at the center right here, they're forecasting that purple. You know, you're talking about 45 to 50 foot waves out there. Absolutely, you can have that. Along the coast of the East Coast, so we're looking at six, eight, 10 foot swells along the East Coast as energy from this. It's like a big hurricane like this is like dropping a pebble in a pond it will send out waves, ripples, and those ripples will reach the east coast, even though the center of the storm is gonna curve away, and they will get some tremendous surf there. So the surfers are happy. There may end up being a uh, big enough surf to cause some erosion issues in many spots up and down the east coast as we head through the middle and end of the week as the storm heads off to the east. So for Houston's forecast, nothing tropical threatening us. In fact, our rain chances are backing down for Sunday, down to a 30% chance for a scattered thunderstorm, high temp 96 on Sunday. Lower rain chance again on Monday, only 30%, but pay attention. Cold front of all things is forecast to push into the area toward the end of the work week. What are your plans Thursday and Friday? Rain chances ramp to 70% on Thursday and Friday of this coming work week, and they may even need to go higher on Wednesday as well as that front approaches. 
So a wet weather pattern is really going to ramp up toward the end of the coming work week. Uh, coming up at 10 o'clock, our next live broadcast, we'll look closely at uh, North America, this front coming in and what it means for rain chances. That's our next live broadcast at 10. We'll see you then.